Hi guys and welcome to episode 4 of Ask Keith. I can't believe we're this far along already. You firing in tons of questions so thank you very much. We've got loads to get through. Let's get started. So first question, Havard asks, I wonder if you ever had a major inspiration blocker and if so, how did you overcome it? Hi Havard, how's it going mate? All the fucking time. It's an absolute pain, no doubt about it. When it comes to music though, there's always one solution for me and that is get out of the studio and go for a walk or a jog or whatever it is you want to do, but get out, get some fresh air. Personally, I like to stick my Walkman on, listen to some tunes, but I'm not actually deliberately trying to analyse them and listen for the answers as to how I can actually move forward with my track. I'm just taking my mind off of it. And usually I find that the answer just comes. And if it doesn't, no problem. I won't go back in the studio. And then it nearly always comes when I wake up the next morning. One other tip for you though, is if you do get out and about, Walkman or not, make sure you've got something, pen and paper or a phone to record your ideas on. Because if you do get that flash of inspiration of how to move forward in your track, and then you get back and you've forgotten it, it's an absolute nightmare. So. It's a part of the creative process. We all go through it. As soon as you feel that you've really hit the wall, I just recommend leaving it, walking away, and don't do anything mentally intensive. Just take a break. Okay, a second question comes from Zeki. He says, when it comes to mix down, he finds it really hard to get everything balanced whilst keeping the master level under six decibels. He's starting with his kick at minus 12 dB, but by the time he's added all of his sounds in, even after compression, he finds that he's going into the red. Zeki, how's it going? So I actually mix the exact same system as you, but I have my kick up to minus 10 dB, so even less headroom. Now, without doubt, the problem that you're getting here is you've got various sounds playing at the same time, so they're stacking up and causing a volume spike for you. What you want to do is where you see the biggest problems in your track, the biggest jumps, loop that up, look at the meters, see how it's reacting with the sounds that are playing, and you'll be able to hone in straight away on exactly where the issue is. So let's say, for example, you find that you've got a kick playing, a clap playing, some percussion playing, and maybe a synth stab. If they're all stacking up, of course you're going to find your meters are jumping up something chronic. Have a listen to it and ask yourself, do you need all of those parts playing there? Normally you'll find that you can't even hear something. So let's say we can't hear the percussion, click, we'll delete that hit out straight away and that's job done. Then you might be able to say to yourself, well what about that synth stab? Can I nudge that ahead of the beat so that the transient of the stab isn't playing at the same time as the kick and the clap? Often by making little small adjustments, reducing some volume, a bit of side chaining, anything like that, you'll find you'll be able to eliminate those nasty spikes that you've got in your audio. Hope that helps. Okay, our third and final question is from Tim Mertens. Tim says he knows it's due to a degree of your own taste and subjective opinion, but what volume levels should you be mixing the different elements in your track at? So for example, he knows when it sounds rubbish, but are there any general guidelines or rules that can help us along? Hi Tim, how's it going? So with this, first up, we already just discussed in the last question this idea of mixing with a reference point like the kick, for example, peaking at minus 10 dB and then keeping the master below six, minus 6 dB. That's just there to show you if you've got any of these volume problems and things are jumping up at all. But when it comes to actually getting the levels of the different elements, it is purely subjective. It's your taste. But here's what I would recommend doing. Start with the kick at this reference level and then mix each of the elements in order of priority to your track. So for example, if you add vocals, in there, they would be a big deal. So get those set to a nice level and then maybe there's a melody in there that might be the next most important. Get that set in. Once you've got those core elements, and it's gonna be a rough guide to start with, once you've got those right, you can start bringing up the volume of your support sounds. Always bearing in mind as you bring everything up in the mix that you're paying attention to the volume of the sound that you're increasing its volume of, but also paying attention to everything that's gone before because remember that's more important. And if you start turning something up and it starts masking or dulling out something that's already there, 
then you know that you need to work on that part. Either don't turn it up as loud or maybe it's time to get the EQ out for example or even remove it if you find that it's just not necessary. So the support stuff will come last and the most important stuff first and that way you can guarantee that the sounds you really want at the front of the mix and you want people hearing they are going to get the importance that they deserve. Hope that helps buddy, take care. So that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks very much for watching and thanks everyone who sent their questions in. If you want me to answer one of your questions, remember it's hashtag AskKeithMills. You can fire that up on Twitter or on Instagram, or if you prefer, just put your question into the contact form below this video and we'll make sure you get answered in a future episode. All the best, happy music making. Guys, take care.